Hi guys, what's up? My name is Emily and this is Painful Hilarity and today I am finally tackling a question that I get all the time and a shout out to John for emailing me and telling me about his life and asking me this question and agreeing to let me answer it on video instead of 300 page now. <laughs> I did try taping this before and I made a list of 10 things to do to cope with chronic pain or chronic illness or mental illness or fill in the blank and I'm a bit of a chatty Kathy if you've not been to this channel before. Hello! <laughs> My videos are really long. I thought that I would tackle a couple at a time and make this kind of a series and because I could literally talk about one for an entire video. So Yes, I did actually write down the list. <laughs> That's how much effort I put into this. Usually I just talk about things right off of the cusp, if you will. But I really had to condense it to 10 because I have OCD and I wanted it to be 10 things, like a list of 10. So there is actually a lot more that I could add. So I thought if this was a series, I could add. And I want you guys to hang on with me those that are struggling with this one. I have all the answers. I have answers that are working for me. First one that I'm going to talk about, the coping mechanism, is friends and family. Ooh. Ooh. This is one that other people, like I call them the normal people, kind of take for granted. I know I did when I wasn't ill because you just I like, well, I mean, I feel like making friends today. I'm just going to go to the coffee shop and sit down. Maybe have a chat with someone. <sighs> Must be great. And then, or you had friends your whole life, and those are just the friends you have. And you're chronically ill, friends kind of bail sometimes. They don't want to deal, or they it's just too much for them to handle. They can blame you. They can put things on you. You can make... It can make you feel really guilty about yourself when you're just being your true self and being sick. And a lot of people can kind of just use you as an excuse to bail because they can't handle it. I know it's awful and it's heartbreaking. I don't think always it's that person being an awful person. I just kind of feel like that friends are meant to be in your life for the period of time that they are. And if you break ties with friends, it's awful. But it just means that other people are meant to come into your life. Now, the reason that I view that is because I have the best freaking friends. Not to brag or anything. But I just want to, I'm really not bragging. They, they really, I do not deserve these people at all in my life. And I'm not saying that just to be humble, like at all. Like I do not deserve these people. I kind of was drifting and I didn't really have a set friend group. I was dealing with my codependency so I was really cutting ties with a lot of my friends that I was in completely toxic negative relationships with. I had broken up with my boyfriend. I just really was adrift and these people came into my life and it was just, they were just ride or die. They were like, what's wrong with you? And I was like, this is what's wrong with me. And they were like, all right, cool. You need me to carry your shopping bags? Like, it was nothing. Like, it li literally that exact circumstance happened with my friend Lindsay. <laughs> yeah, and I just had these three amazing people just brush into my life. And we just all connected. And they're just, they are the coolest people. And I get, a, get different things from each of them, but value each of their friendships equally. Okay, putting friends aside. Say we don't do friends. Because I have social anxiety, so I get it. Let's do family and then we're going to circle around. You'll get it. You'll, you'll see where I'm circling around because they kind of meld into one. So family. I have an amazingly awesome family. And that was just something that I was just blessed with. I've gotten a lot of messages over the years like, how do I talk to my family about this? How do I talk to my dad about this? How do I talk to my mom about this? It's something that's so unique. It's so complex that it's hard for me to answer that, but I have answered it for some of you guys, particularly dads, because I still deal with my dad in a very, very 
unique way and it is not broaching the concept of me being in excruciating pain or very ill or really in not a good headspace because he can't handle hit someone he loves being in that hard of a place and for him not to be able to fix it. And so we clashed a lot on that at the beginning. Like it was just like, well, you can go and just do this and you can go just do this. And like, do you really want to live with us? Like, what, what about living somewhere else? And it was just like turmoil in my brain because I felt like he was constantly rejecting me. Like I was being a burden and I was being a pain and he just wanted me out of his life. But what was really happening is he was having a difficult time dealing with the emotions that were coming up for him that like there was no cure for this and he couldn't fix me and there was not anything to do. When I go out and talk to my dad in the morning and he asks me how I'm doing and I say, okay, that means I'm on death's door. <laughs> That means I am really, really feeling ill. But to him, I need to say I'm feeling okay. It doesn't mean I'm feeling okay. He knows what it means, but he can choose to think in his brain because he has life going on. He has things going on. And some days, like, he can't process my illness. And so some days he can choose to think, okay, I'm just feeling okay today. You know, like, okay. Or sometimes he's like, oh, okay, I get it. She's going to be in her room probably. Now my mom, who's my caregiver, I talk to her about a ton of stuff. Now I don't talk to her about everything just because as a parent, I feel like, I'm not a parent. I, I'm just saying like putting myself in their position. I feel like it would be very difficult and upsetting. That's why this like whole support system is so crucial because if I feel like I can't talk to my mom about something, maybe I'll call up my friend Monica about something, or maybe I'll text Alicia about something, or, you know what I mean? Like, there's different levels to this triangle that I can go to to get the support that I need. Okay, so I can't really talk about this other rung that is very important to me without talking about a game that I play. And it has a very negative connotation and like there's been like documentaries about it and I've watched them and they just all are so creepy. But it's a, it's a game called Second Life and I've played it for over a decade. It is like The Sims but with real people behind the other characters in the game. So you have like an avatar and you can dress it up. You literally can do anything in the game that you can do in real life like you could go to a carnival you could go shopping you, there's models there's I mean there's everything but anyways there are people that I have met in this game that I've met ages ago that like Crystal for instance she is someone that I consider my real life sister I mean she's black so it's clear that we're not actual sisters but sh I She's my sister from another mister. I don't know what I would do without her. That time in my life where I was cutting negative people out of my life, she was the only person I had that, she made the cut. <laughs> she was the only person I had a healthy relationship with. And so, yeah, so I've been best friends with her for ever, for ages. And I just consider her my sister. And then along the way, a little bit after that, I started forming kind of a family network. It's so hard to explain. I have a mom and a dad and I have sisters and I have aunts and grandparents. It's just been an enormous comfort to me and I'm not able to see them now because there's very few times where I'm actually able to be on my computer but to be able to send them a message every here and every once in a while and to hear from them or to see what's going on in their lives is extremely uplifting because you feel like you're part of something and you feel like you matter and you feel like people care that you're alive still even though you might be in your bed with your chihuahua in the dark not moving because you're so freaking dizzy that you can't even turn the lights on and and or move 
you could get a message from your mom and it'll make you cry because she's just so loving and caring. I just feel like I've just like hit the jackpot of amazing people and they're extremely supportive and it's a community of people that I can be real with and live life with and tell them you know things are not going well with me like it's I'm not good and they they will know they will be the first people that notice like, things have been off like are you not feeling well like when things started to really decline with me like I'm I don't know exactly but I'm positive they were the ones that were like what's going on hon like this is not you don't seem right of course it's hard to talk to them as well sometimes because Again, it's parents and people that love you, and so sometimes I'll then talk to my animals. Like, my animals are such a huge part of my community. Bella being the star, as she will. She's over there sleeping. I talk to her a ton, and you may think that's weird or creepy or what have you. And I just got a maniac named Jax. Um... And he's just, he's awesome. He's so much fun. Animals can be a huge, huge uh, part of feeling loved and accepted. And they're just, for me, there's nowhere else that you can find unconditional love like that. Like, if I don't take a shower for a week because I can't, my dog doesn't say a thing. Like, having really understanding friends that... I mean, my friends are the kind of friends that we could be getting ready to do something. I get really excited about things, like really excited. And I could be like this level of hyped. And then when it comes to be, do something, I could be like, I'm really sick. Like, I can't. And they're like, that's cool. We'll do it some other time. Or we'll just go do it. And blah, 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 blah. Like, they just get me. And I think you just have to wait for that. And... I think that we have this perception that people have these friends since kindergarten and they're sororities and that's their lifelong friends and you're never going to meet friends as an adult unless you have a job or what have you or I don't have anyone at work that I connect with so I'm just going to be friendless forever but sometimes they just come across and you just meet someone and connect with them and that could be your person and I've had people friends that have come into my life and gracefully have let them go <laughs> um, just because they just were not a good person to have in my life anymore and not any judgment or anything bad about them it's just they weren't my people a companionship like a boyfriend or husband or wife or girlfriend male female you know all the genders I don't really have a lot to say on that because I was in a relationship when I was completely codependent and tried to be the perfect person while I was sick. So that went great. <sighs> and then I dated a bunch and that was a nightmare. And I have had like, you know, short term boyfriends, yada, 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 that just were like, at this point, it's just not worth my energy. I mean, I only have so many spoons and boyfriends would be like half of my spoons and I'm lucky if I even have any spoons at the end of the day. So, that's not happening. Um, there's people all over the place and I understand, again, social anxiety, awkward, weird person, ill, I understand not being able to get out and make friends and that was why Second Life SL was such a great thing for me because I could get out, meet people, talk on Skype with people, um, really connect with people and not leave my bed sometimes. Like I could just be in my bed with my laptop talking to people. And that's incredibly amazing, I think. And then there is community such as Instagram or Twitter. I don't. I don't get Twitter. I do. I don't just. I just don't get it. I just don't get it. I think it's really cool, and I'll have thoughts pop into my brain, and then I think, ah, oh, I should tweet this, and then I'm like, 
on to the next thing and it's gone. <laughs> I think you have to have like a memory and not fibro fog to be able to like really do Twitter. And then YouTube! It's such an amazing community just in the comments down below. When you guys comment to me and comment to each other and share your lives or email me, I have all of my information down below if you want to email me or follow my Instagram. My Instagram is Painful Hilarity. Shocking, I know. I think it's just at Painful Hilarity. I post a lot of pictures of my dog. And then there's some of you guys that have embraced YouTube and been like, this looks cool. For some of you that I've talked to, they're like, I'm thinking about doing a YouTube channel. And I'm like, do it. It has been so rewarding and so positive And I just cannot say enough good things about it. You think that like, oh, I'll make this little video and nobody will watch it. I thought I would get 10 views on one of my videos. And that was the coolest thing ever. If 10 people watched my video, I would have lost my mind. And now I'm here like thousands and thousands and thousands of views later. I mean, I'm by far not a huge channel or anything, but that blew my mind. And to get comments and to get close to you guys, I befriended you guys. That's just priceless. And so you're connecting with people in your community. And what's been really cool is they're in my community kind of like spoonies. There are people that have other illnesses and they started channels. And I think that is the coolest thing ever. You see how rewarding it is then. And you're like, oh, why was I so afraid to do this? And because I am not a confident person. I am not like this exciting person to watch and look at me huh just do it okay <laughs> if you want to do a video just do it you don't even have to tell anyone you did it that's how cool you can be about it just post it and just see what happens put a little thing it's like spoony chit chat and see what happens and see who watches your video and who you connect with and i did my chronic my life with chronic pain project I connected with so many people I'm trying to think quickly of anything else it's not like it might be there might be another coping mechanism but it's on later on in my list and I'll talk about it see why I didn't do 10 things because this video is probably already 800 minutes long and I know a lot of you guys like my long videos even though I feel so nervous every time I put out a long video because I don't know they just from day one, when I first started doing YouTube videos, they said like not over two and a half minutes or something. My videos are always like 20 minutes long. But when I talk to you guys about it, you guys like it. You guys do like the dishes or hang out, take showers and listen to me rant and rave and talk like a lunatic. So I hope this was helpful guys. This is just number one coping mechanism. I will be doing more videos. Please give me a thumbs up if you like this video. I don't actually, I don't actually know what thumbs up and like all that kind of stuff does. It just lets me know that you like this video and you want more of these type of videos. And then I will be talking about other things that are great coping mechanisms for this life that we all live together. I would really like to. This has been really fun. I hope you're having a pain-free, stress-free day. And I'm sending out eggs double O's. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye! Having a mom. Please just excuse my hair. Just indefinitely. I'm growing it out to cut it off for locks for love that is an amazing organization. Till then, ugh, it's being dramatic. <sighs> really, life? How do, you, how do you deal with life? One thing I am noticing is that I come out of the gate with a lot of energy in these new videos and then I just get really tired. So I think I'm just going to take you on that journey with me. I've just been kind of not putting those videos out because I just kind of crash because I only have about this much energy and then I get really tired and most of my videos are longer than that energy so hey hate is gonna hate
Mind you, I'm not married. I know it's hard to believe that I'm not off the market. Obviously, you have to be a little bit weird to connect with me. But so I hope you're having a stress. <laughs> hope you're having a stress-free. <laughs> oh my god. This is what the end of my videos look like, okay?